Со школы? Да. А тебе сколько лет-то? 16. Ты учишься? Нет, уже это. Это бабуля еще. А ты за место бабушки да. вышел? In Uzbekistan, every autumn for the past five years, the human rights activist Dmitry Tikhanov visited cotton fields and gathered information on child and forced labor. He met with people of various professions, teachers, doctors, students, people whose professions were not in any way associated with the cotton industry. Still, these people were forced to work on the cotton fields under the threat of punishment. А само занятие правозащиты для меня, ну кто-то это называет для себя работой, а как я сам для себя определил, для меня это просто образ жизни. Ну а почему я стал заниматься принудительным трудом на хлопке? А, то есть это направление моей правозащитной практики сформировалось как бы само собой, в силу того, что большое количество обращений ко мне как правозащитнику было именно по этим вопросам, особенно в сезон сбора хлопка. У вас фирма-то частная? Фирма, да. Да, фирма. Все равно отправляют? Да, да, да. да, 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 да. А если не поедешь, Где? скажешь, не хочу ехать на хлопок. Да. Да. Узбекистан – это самый популярный страна в Центральной Азии, с более 30 миллионов. Но есть только один из общественных активистов, которые открыто экспозируют государственные правовые 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 Они живут под контролем сурвейленцией Узбек полиции и секьюрити сервисов. В факте, The government of Uzbekistan treats them as enemies of the state because of their peaceful human rights activities. October 2015. After arresting and beating Dmitry Tikhanov, the Uzbek authorities fabricated charges against him. His home office was burned down and materials were confiscated from a room in his house untouched by the fire. By the end of 2015, Dmitry Tikhanov was forced to flee Uzbekistan and seek political asylum in Europe. Uzbekistan's government has never admitted to orchestrating forced labor in the cotton sector, yet the evidence is undeniable and has been brought to the world's attention by dedicated local activists. In October 2015, the head doctor at a regional hospital in Uzbekistan, Yusuf Ezergapov, died of a heart attack. He had just been released from prison, where local officials had detained him for two days, because his hospital had not fulfilled its quota of the National Cotton Harvest Plan. This story was exposed by another human rights activist, Oktam Padaev. It is one of many abuses in the Uzbek cotton sector that would have remained unknown without Oktam and the work of other activists. The police arrested Oktam Padaev on the 16th of November 2015, following his reporting of forced labour during the 2015 cotton harvest. The authorities released him two months later, after having sentenced him to five to six years in prison based on fabricated charges. Under international pressure, the authorities then changed the sentence to three years on probation. Under probation, Oktam is obliged to register at the police station every second and fourth Saturday of the month. He also has to obtain police permission to leave his hometown, Jizak and if he wants to leave his home after 10 p.m. Kurkta mutkuzamız diye vakti şey yiçinin dedi. Ben kurtkalarım diye çıp kuyneklarım diye indi yiçemendi diye vaktim. Ne mega tiz yiçim madeng dip yürek tamamga zarba bulan urdu. Another Uzbek human rights activist, Yelena Orlayeva, was also repeatedly and violently harassed in 2015 for documenting forced labor in the cotton sector. The Uzbek government tried to intimidate her into silence through public attacks, beatings, by placing her in a psychiatric hospital and filing charges at the courts. Despite constant threats, attacks and intimidation, Elena stubbornly continues to defend human rights and investigate labour rights abuses in the Uzbek cotton sector. In May 2015, Elena was arrested while distributing leaflets about the prohibition of forced labour. During interrogation at the police station, officers injected her with a paralyzing agent and subjected her to a full-body cavity search, 
allegedly searching for flash disks. In fact, it is the Uzbek government that has something to hide. For decades, the government has used forced child labour during the cotton harvest. They have cynically argued that these allegations are an invention by human rights defenders. Finally, in 2014, thanks to the tenacious work of Elena, Dimitri, Oktam and other activists, the authorities stopped sending children to harvest cotton. These brave activists have risked their own lives, yet their efforts enabled the global advocacy that pressed the Uzbek government to cease forcing more than one million children to pick cotton each year. С 2007 года мы начали ездить по полям, собирать информацию, факты, доказывающие, как государство умышленно отрывает детей от учебного процесса и зная, что поля и вода обрабатываются пестицидами, дефилянтами, химическими удобрениями, заставляют детей от 7 до 18 лет работать на полях под палящим солнцем. Я городской человек, и живя в городе, я не понимала такой проблемы, как принудительный труд на хлопке. Но когда на полях я увидела маленьких детей, учеников в первых классах, и они были меньше хлопчатника, и они были беззащитны, и их эксплуатировало государство как рабов для получения валюты и прибыли за хлопок, тогда я решила во что бы то ни стало защищать детей». Детей не защищали ни родители, ни учителя. То есть, кроме нас, правозащитников, дети только надеялись на нас, и их родители тоже надеялись на помощь правозащитников. Oktan Padaev, Dmitry Tikhanov and Elena Orlaeva cannot attend the award ceremony today. Oktan Padaev is not allowed to leave home. Elena Orlaeva was denied an exit visa to leave the country. Dmitry Tikhanov was forced to flee Uzbekistan and is awaiting asylum in Europe. But in spite of the threats and harassment, they continue to speak out in defense of freedom and human dignity.